you were born, mm -hmm. uh, you were premature, and your mother did not think you were going to make it. Right, exactly. So how did she take care of you? She always made sure that I was in a warm place. And it described a warm place. A as warm she place, it. always warm, like sunshiny, and you know, because that was it was like an incubator back then. And she called it a shoebox. She called that I was little enough that you can put in a, put me in a shoebox. As a little girl, did you have a dream or an ambition of something you wanted to be someday? Did you want to be a movie star? Did you want to be an inventor? No, I just wanted to find someone that was special to me and, you know, get married and have a family. That was my, that was my, my life. She met that special person and together they started a new life while serving our country. I moved away from home. The only daughter that ever moved away ever from my home to uh, Washington, D.C. How hard was that for your dad, first off? That was difficult. My dad helped us to go out. And I, I, you know, I had a little savings when I got, got married. And we went out and bought this trailer. And this trailer was a trailer. Our kitchen table would fold up into the wall and come down. We had no air condition in Washington, D.C. Okay, no TV, no bathroom, because we would have to go on, on the base. And this is funny, I don't know if I should say this or not. In the, in the bedroom, we had, we had two doors, one in the bedroom, one in the, uh, the other room. And I would have my chemical toilet there and iron board behind it. So I was by myself, didn't know anyone, dad was working. So I think if anybody ever tried to get in the trailer, they'd get knocked off by the, by the ironing board and trip on the commode. <laughs> a couple years and several babies later, they had their own apartment with no central heating and few appliances. My washing machine was a baby washer and I would wash my clothes and put them in the bathtub, wring them out and pass them back through the ringer and hang them on the line three flights up. And then this Ricky, porch and so it, of course things would freeze on the line you know and we had let's see we had let's see Bob Lynn Steve I was expecting Phil was it like folding a frozen diaper <laughs> well I'd take the clothes off the line I had this great big horse rack what they call back then and I would put all my diapers on it and finish drying them up there like a towel rack today. like a towel rack yeah. yeah new house why not fill it with a few more babies as the tenth of twelve, one of the last, I could ask why. Were you thinking to yourself, and you don't have to answer this, but how many kids am I going to have? What do, <laughs> when do we stop? Well, yeah, yeah. What were you thinking? I about did, that? because back then, I mean, I don't know how I can quite put this. I wanted all of my children, but I didn't plan plan it. But I always enjoyed my babies. Well, for a while, you had a baby every year to year and a half. Just about, yeah. So you were pregnant for almost like 20 years. <laughs> right, right. Did you get tired of being pregnant? Yeah, yeah. But whenever I had the baby, it was, it was worth it, you know. And then you're taking care of all these other babies and another one, then there's another. And you're, you're continuously taking care of babies. Right. But you like babies still. Yes, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Little did she know her next move would be a world away a transfer to Oklahoma. I thought he was kidding. I mean, Pam and Tina were just, they were babies, they were little. So we said, well, I guess we'll go to Oklahoma. Packing up in a snowstorm, they were off to a home that kids would later find small for 12 kids and two adults. But to her... We had a beautiful home with three bathrooms, two showers. Luxury. Luxury, this was super, this was great. Lots of sharing, including things no one wanted to share. You know what it's like when you have a sick child? How about a half dozen at once? Oh, when they were sick. When they were sick, it was epide epidemic in the house. Possibly when we had six of them with the chicken pox at one time. And we didn't have what we have today, except for soda baths and calamine lotion. <laughs> That's it. So it was a matter of if anyone in the family ever got sick, it was a wipeout. When you had all these kids in your house, how did you feed them? Who taught you how to feed that many people? It just came natural. I mean, there was one time when, just for instance, I get one pancakes. It took me an hour and a half to make pancakes for the family. 
So I had everyone sitting around the table and I, they all got one each round and then a second round. And it was just like it was, you had a job to do and you did it. But I don't know, it was just kind of automatically, it was just kind of, you just had to feed them and you had to dress them. I even made clothes, I even made pajamas, I made play clothes for the kids, you know. And as they grew and started out on their own, her job was not done. I couldn't go to, I could not go to sleep until everyone was in bed and settled down. That was me. Soon an empty nest, once filled with chaos, commotion, and love. It was, I had reached a point where I was so busy, and then all of a sudden, I'm in a big empty house. Yeah. Everybody's gone in their direction. So at that point, I had to build, kind of build a new life for myself. I'd become me, which I never was me, it was I was involved in, in, the, in the kids and you know, family. And you like being a mom. And I love being a mom. And then, like right now, a grandmother and a great grandmother. And I, I see my children not as often as I'd like, but because I would have all my kids around me, because that's just me. Would you still do all of our food, uh, cook all of our food, and do all of our laundry and all of our cleaning if we all move back in with you? No. <laughs> Mom, your work is done. It's our turn to spoil you. We love you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day.